This is our new breakout board. And brand new controller box. So today's project is going to be about rebuilding the controller box that runs the CNC. You can see I got the shelf up here with the monitor. I've got my actual computer that sits here. This is my controller box with all my drivers and all that in there. And you can see, or actually can you see, let's tilt you down here. So it's pretty full. There's no room to put a variable frequency drive in here, which I want to do someday. So I need more room. I need a little more ventilation. And when I installed my limit switches, I found out that my breakout board only had like five input devices. And with the amount of switches, my kill switch, and some uh, other limit things, I d didn't have nearly enough. So I got another board that's going to use both port one and port two off of my smooth stepper. Right now, this is how I turn the controller box on and off. I just simply plug it in. I bought a switch that's going to go on the outside of the new controller box. New controller box is quite a bit bigger. The computer is actually going to fit inside of that. That way I'm going to cut down on the dust. I'm going to put another fan, get some more circulation. So I'll show you that new box and we'll get going on the build. So this is the new controller box. Got a little drawer up here for stuff. Big open space here, see if you can see down in there. I've got holes here where fans are gonna go in. Got a hole on the bottom as well. And I'm really gonna get the circulation in there. I can go ahead and that computer will fit right down in here. Fits right here, the dimensions are perfect. And I got stuff to go in here. Switches, power blocks, extra cords, DIN rails, DIN rail blocks, other switches, fans, fan grates. And in here, my new breakout board that goes on top of my smooth stuffer. We're going to keep it in the anti-static until we're ready to go. So right here, you're just watching me deconstruct this thing so I can get it off the floor because I hate working on my knees. First thing I have to do is take all the wires that come in through the back of it from the CNC itself because that's what's keeping it in place. And you'll see I've got a mess of wires laying here on the ground. But it wasn't stupid like I usually am. And I marked everything where it belongs so I can put it back together easily next time. And now it's off the ground and on the table, much easier to work on, and we're going to deconstruct it and label it. Here's my original breakout board and only had five inputs. That's why this thing's leaving. And then I took all the stepper wires off and marked them as well. Then I removed the smooth stepper, all the stepper drivers, and the power source. And that completed deconstruction. So the offsets uh, had to be forced in there, but not a problem. And then I got the blocks mounted. You'll notice here that uh, port two is on the top, port one's on the bottom of the smooth stepper. And then here on the new breakout board, it's labeled pretty plainly where port 1 is here on the right and port 2 is on the left. And at first, when I went to plug this in, I had it backwards, but it's supposed to go this way. Thankfully, I know how to read. Not like that. Like that. So I put the controller box 
right in place where it was going to go so I could drill the holes and get the layout for the electrical so I could mount the electrical on it while it wasn't on the ground because I hate working on my knees. Then I had to spend some time trying to get the perfect configuration of how stuff was going to mount, where it was going to go, and what the best fit was going to be. And then I made this shelf because putting the computer up in there worked out perfect. And then it just came to mounting the DIN rails and the DIN blocks and the stepper drivers and the wires and all the other neat stuff that goes along with the controller box. So as you can see, I'm mounting the stepper drivers in upside down, but in the next scene I fixed it and turned them back over. So my old breakout board, the comm was jumped to 5 volts and you notice there's a comm for every driver. But on a new breakout board, there's only one 5 volt output, so it's going to make it hard to connect all the drivers to one 5 volt output. So to fix this problem I took all the COM wires or 5 volt feed wires, separated them out and then I ran them to this terminal block and I jumped four different terminals to each other and that way I could just hook each one of them up one spot. You'll see here that one 5 volt feed does those four. That 5 volt feed will do the limit switches that I'm going to put in in the future. So now that it's in place, most of the wiring's done. All I got to do is run the electrical in here, connect it up. I put a power switch connected by a plug. I couldn't find a place in to put it that was convenient, so I put it right dead in the center of the door. And then I just simply had to put everything in there. Computer, run all the wires for the stepper motors, connect those to the driver. Remember, these are the limit switches, they're not going in now. And all I had to do was plug all this stuff back in as labeled, and we were good to go. Put a little weather stripping sealer on all the edges to keep the dust out. And there you can see it's all buttoned up. The fan in the bottom sucks in, the fan on the top blows out, creates good circulation, nice and clean, plenty of room for in the future when I go to put in a variable frequency drive. So that's what we call a had to be done project, not necessarily a fun project, but I needed to do it. Now our next project is going to be the limit switches. That may not be necessarily fun, but it has to be done. After that, we're going to do some fun stuff. So we'll see you next time.